what, uh, what does OR3M stand for? Well, OR3M, of course, ORM stands for Organizational Resilience Management, and the three stands for Risk, Resilience, and Return. The three R's. Well, let's talk about resilience today. Um, I wanted to ask you, what are, what are the signs of a resilient organization and what can businesses do to make themselves resilient? Well, resiliency is defined as an organization that's adaptive and collaborative. In other words, they have the capability to face adversity, uh, no matter if that adversity is man-made, natural, or technological. Uh, you know, adversity, or what we call risk, uh, can, can, a, can impact an organization uh, from any number of er areas. And the fact today that we're a global economy, that we're a global society, uh, events that happen overseas uh, impact how we do things right here in the United States. Uh, a recent example of that is the Tohoku earthquake, uh, which basically brought uh, three Japanese auto manufacturers and, and uh, two Japanese camera manufacturers, brought their production lines to a standstill uh, because they were no longer able to get parts through their supply chain. Uh, so that is uh, a lack of resiliency, and a resilient organization is able to respond to those types of adversity uh, as, it, as if it were normal business. You know, that, that's the bottom line. You know, I, I, I had a supervisor many years ago. Uh, we were in the middle of a flood, and I thought I was doing a great job. I was just running around. Uh, I had hair then, and I was running around like a, uh, uh, like, you know, with head on fire, and I was just, you know, sticking and moving and giving directions and everything. And, and my supervisor came up to me, and he put his arm around me, and he said, Jeff, he said, uh, you're not having an emergency, they are. And the wisdom of those words didn't hit me for a number of years. What he was trying to tell me, and I've thanked him since, is that when we are in the middle of an emergency, is not the time to be having an emergency. We have to develop organizations that have a capacity for resiliency to weather out adversity. When adversity happens, our employees, our enterprises, our brands are looking for leadership. They're looking for guidance. They're looking for a process. They want to get through this event and get back to new normal as quickly as possible. A resilient organization shows the capacity to be able to demonstrate uh, this kind of leadership in the face of adversity. In your consulting role, do you encounter businesses that say, well, what's it going to cost me? to try to be resilient? Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's, there's a cost factor there. But, you know, when we, when we try to work with an organization into adapting the organizational resilience management standard, which, by the way, is a quality management standard uh, that, was, uh, that was crafted uh, in collaboration uh, by ASIS International, when we, we address that, we start with a good, high-quality, all-hazards, uh, risk, threat, and vulnerability assessment that considers critical interdependencies and, and all forms of risk to the enterprise. Once we can identify that risk, then as part of that we can identify risk capacity. Well, when we identify risk and risk capacity, then we can put numbers to it. We can say you're looking at this potential loss. So if you do produce cars and you produce 10,000 cars a, a month, and you need 10,000 parts a month from Japan, and you have not seen that single point of failure, and now you're shut, your line shuts down for 30 days, well, there's a value to that shutdown. There's a value to not being able to produce those 10,000 cars. So what we do is capture that information and say, okay, look, here's your potential risk, okay? What's your risk appetite? What's your risk capacity? How much of this are you willing to absorb and still stay in business the next day? Or do you want to create plans, programs, portals, and engage in a resilience uh, effort, okay, an organizational resilience effort to prevent that risk from ever touching your door? Because not only will we prevent it from touching our door, but it also puts us ahead of, a step ahead of our competitors. It also builds uh, reputation and respect 
within folks in our supply downstream that says, you know what, even in the face of adversity, these folks are going to be there for me. So you, you build brand loyalty. Uh, you have continued revenue because basically what we're doing is we're making these events non-events for an organization because we operate in this adaptive and collaborative environment that allows us to rapidly respond, you know, from onset to response, and then from response to recovery and recovery to new normal in a very, very compressed fashion because it's a practiced effort. It's something we've looked, about, looked at. Another good mark of a resilient organization is when we encounter something that we haven't encountered before, because we're so adaptive and collaborative and we don't work in silos and we work towards mutual uh, goals and, and benefiting the enterprise, we can take bits and pieces of our, of our other lessons learned, apply them to the new disaster or the new risk and weather that out decently as well. So it's, it's a great tool. Are organizations today willing to accept more or less risk than they had in the past? Uh, you know, all you got to do is look at the news and answer that question. Uh, you know, if you look at the BP Gulf oil disaster, there were a few days there that uh, BP was looking at a potential buyout. BP almost ceased to exist uh, as a result of their, the damage to their brand reputation and, and the loss during, during the Gulf disaster. So I think nobody wants to see risk in, in, in that level that it actually closes down their enterprise. Nobody plans on going out of business, but a failure to plan will cause you to go out of business. And, and that's where it pays, and that's what the, the buy-in is, and that's where we have to make the business case for resiliency. One of the things that you can consider with business uh, in resiliency is resiliency is not just a concept. It's a total quality management standard. So if you have ever considered ISOs, ISO 19,000, which is management standards, ISO 31,000 risk management, ISO 28,000, or what most folks are familiar with, ISO 9001 quality, ASIS SPC 1-2009 is an organizational resilience management ISO standard. So all we're talking about is applying the business case, applying business metrics to the business of resiliency. Thank you.